Good morning. Good morning. I know you can't turn the radio. If I could have your attention, please. Attention, attention. There you go. Thank you. So we're going to begin out here with the litany. And if we can get all of you, uh, see it's in there, it's not out here. We can't get this speaker. So we give it the litany and then we sing all glory, law, and honor, which is on the next page. So you can just walk in and you have your palms. You get a palm. Um, so whenever we say Hosanna, remember, yes, thank you, God. I can lift. Yeah, you can do that, whatever. All right, oh Jesus, as you entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, enter into our hearts, for you have come to save us and bless us. So we say, Hosanna, blessed is he. Oh Jesus, as you entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, enter into this church, for your presence here makes the name of the Lord known to us. So we say, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O oh, Jesus, as you entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, enter into all the world, for your kingdom is everlasting, and you rule over all with mercy and with love. So we say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel and the King of all. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as our reader, Doug, comes forward for a reading. Let us pray. Doug, may God bless you as you read for us the scriptures. 
May the word of God dwell in us richly so that everything we do in word or deed will be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. The first reading is from Philippians, the second chapter. But the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to sing our gospel acclamation you do not need to stand because as you see the passion reading is quite long and uh, we're going to only I'm going to ask you to stand when we get to about the middle of the last page and I'll just do this because it's right before Jesus dies so we'll stand there at the end of the gospel and then um, sing our yeah, at that time. So let us join in singing Return to the Lord Your God. Um. Story 
comes from Luke, the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the whole assembly arose and led Jesus off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him. We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. Caesar is the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked the man if he was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to the pilot. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, He brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither is Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice they cried out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Gyrene, who was on his way from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one in his right and one on his left. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't do you fear, fear God, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this is what is a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And before we sing our hymn, which is, uh, Alas, and did my Savior bleed? You may stand if you're able for that. Just to mention, you know, during the Passion reading on Palm Sunday, we don't have a sermon. So if you're expecting one, come on Good Friday, because I have one. And again, we'll hear many of these same words during the Good Friday Tenebrae service at 7, and so you'll hear some more of them. So now, together, we sing hymn 337 as printed in the book.
drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, for the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation, that we take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, for those in positions of authority, called to lead with integrity and compassion. Supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, for those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation. Accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused. Embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially those we name before you now. Merciful God, for Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Merciful God, and we remember those who have died, who are commended into your hands. Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have been reconciled to God who has given us a reconciliation ministry. Let us be reconciled, therefore, with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share the peace as you are comfortable doing so. As our ushers come forward for the offering, let us be seated for a prayer. So God, we give you thanks for bringing us here today for this celebration and thankfulness for your suffering and death. As we prepare to return a portion of our gifts, may they be used for your service. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated for communion if you have your individual ones. Those that have to stay in your pews, and you can open those with the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Otherwise, we will come forward and we do this continuously. So you will receive bread and then the grape. The wine is around the outside, the very middle is grape juice. I need somebody to. Ah, you're going to. Thank you, God. I do have gluten free papers, too. So we're going to start. Down over there, and then we'll switch. So you hang on that side so they can go by that way.
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ, shed for you. readers, Sandy, awesome job, thank you, and Doug is back there now. also want to uh, mention with the poems, we have lots of extras, so please take some home with you, and if you need to know how to make the crosses, we have our expert here, Alicia, sure, Belly, <laughs> she is so good at that, she showed me how to do that, but if you want to know how to make them, I do have a something at home I can send you that shows you how easily to make the crosses. Easter lilies, of course, this is the last day to sign up for those. I think we have about how many? 13 or 14. Yeah, so if you'd like one, there's still the sheep back there. The men's Easter breakfast, of course, next week. I think you've got who you need, right? We've got who we need, just those. I don't know if anybody in the congregation is because I want men showing up. I talked to anybody. But show up at 7.30 if you want to help out. Okay. The mic is back there, by the way. The portable one. If you, somebody That's okay. It. Okay. Um, we also, of course, Good Friday service. The community service. I put the flyer up on the bulletin board back there. So if you uh, would like to go to that at noon, there's five churches involved with that, including myself. I'm looking forward to being there with the other clergy. 
And then our service is at 7. And I know the choir and bell choir are doing their thing again, as well as on Easter. And the breakfast is at 8.30, starting at 8.30. Easter egg hunt at 9, and then service at 10. Now, any other announcements? I knew Ruth was going to do that. We should just give you your own mic. And you wouldn't have to, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's my turn to run off the mouth again. First of all, we give out more food for the Easter food baskets than at any other time. More baskets of food, more bags, than at any other time since I've been home with this. I am giving a very sincere thanks to everyone. There were people that were just so overjoyed with that food, you would have no idea. So from them, thank you. I would like to uh, say that Nancy Green's in charge of this. She just wants me to talk, so yeah. I'll do it. Um, and thank you to everyone else that helped, all um, through the Black Stuff, to Lisa, to um, uh, Jean, to Hilda, people that helped pack, people that helped um, chop. Thank you. Next thing, for those of you who missed the soup suppers, Come and have some of the desserts that were left over and the cheese and crackers that were left over. This is your chance to be part of that. There's also a few other things um, that were left over. Cheese, cake, and coffee cake. Um, and have a coffee hour with us. I would really invite all of you to do so. Thank you. And thank you to all who came to the soup supper and also provided the soups. We had I counted 30 maybe or so. I don't know the exact number. We had a nice turnout and seven soups. So hopefully next year things continue as they have been. We'll have our five soup pepper churches again. I, at this point, we'll see what happens. But anything else? Petra, you don't have any? Oh, you do have the spring cleanup is in here. Oh, yeah. For Saturday, May 21st. Well, so, we'll mark it on here. All right. If nothing else, the choir is going to sing the benediction and the closing hymn. You notice there's uh, certain verses. There in God's garden, there's one, four, five, and six is what we're saying. <laughs>
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you. 